flag as whoa hello whoa uh, Mason Rudolph got Rudolph into needs it. to get out of there was it Pouncy that was kicking and throwing yeah, the, the punches well, that's another one they're they're well they're, they're absolutely I mean this is multiple game suspension oh. right here And then Ogan Joby comes up and hits Rudolph from behind. Beyond words, oh, Joe. Gosh, that's one of the worst things I've ever seen on a professional sports field. All I know is this, the minute Mason went after the man's helmet with his foot in his groin, it's on. I'm hearing all these announcers saying uh, that Garrett should be suspended. Maybe he should. But when a guy's trying to get your helmet off your head, and that's where it started, why, with his foot in your groin, it's on. I'm just saying. Take care. Hey, Twitter world, yours truly. Well, last night I was at a restaurant with a bunch of friends uh, watching the debacle. Good game until then, anyway. But, um, you know, when we saw it in replay, there was no sound. Our first reaction was, uh, 
Well, Rudolph, uh, Mason, you're going to get fined for trying to take his helmet off. And then, Garrett, you're going to get fined for taking his helmet off. And then, Garrett, you're going to get suspended for trying to hit him with that helmet, which made no sense at all. Garrett, you're 280 pounds. You don't need a helmet to take care of a quarterback. And uh, Pouncey, you're going to get suspended. You tried to kick the man in the head when he was on the ground. What bothered me a little bit, I got to say, was hearing all the announcers become prosecutors and talk about criminal activity and prosecuting and all of that and claiming they never saw this before. Come on, anybody who's been around football has seen this. We've seen it in training camp. It's hot. Uh, linemen, two, three days a week getting to fight. The first thing they do is trying to take the other guy's helmet off. Um, kudos to ESPN2. They showed a montage of college players and pro players who took guys' helmets off and tried to hit them. And Ryan Clark and Marcellus Wiley <laughs> love what you guys had to say. You were right on. What I don't get is in baseball, they could purposely throw a ball 90 miles an hour at a guy's head because the guy jogged around the bases or because uh, they hit one of their own players, the other team's players, and uh, the benches could clear. Guys are hitting each other in the back and all of that. And it's reported almost humorously. You know, it's part of the game. In hockey, it's part of the game. But in basketball, in football, it's criminal activity. It's thuggish action. You have to tell me why you think that's the case. One thing I do know in, uh, in the, uh, what is it called, uh, make my day law in Colorado or stand your ground in Florida, Mason would have been the aggressor. He would have been the guy prosecuted. I'm just saying. <laughs> Take care. Hey, hello, Twitter world. Well, I'm just seeing the uh, suspensions that's being handed down uh, from last night's fiasco. <laughs> it's justified. I, I agree with it. I think all of those guys should have gotten some type of suspension. But I am baffled by one point. Why is it the guy who initiated all the helmet crap, the guy who, after they were separated and Miles Garrett was being shoved away from him, continued the aggression that led to the additional um, conflict. Why isn't his name mentioned in any of the suspensions? Somebody have to explain that to me. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> take care. What's up, everybody? Um, I just did. Uh, I just did Scott Van Pelt. I'm here at ESPN. Uh, Finish that. Um, and for those of you that didn't see Scott Van Pelt, talked about the Miles Garrett situation. But I just wanted to expand on my thoughts on that whole on that whole ordeal in the game. And um, my 12 years, I've never seen anything like that playing in the National Football League. And I've seen some some wild stuff uh, on the football field. I have. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff, but I have never, ever seen a dude take off, rip off a quarterback's helmet and hit him upside the head with his helmet. Okay? When I saw that, it looked criminal. Think about how crazy that is. You're on the football field. You get paid to physically assault another human being, and that felt criminal. That felt criminal. So, I don't want to hear any excuses about, you know, what triggered Miles Garrett. Because there are no excuses for that action. None. Zero. And I said on Scott, I said on, on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt, I think he should be gone the rest of the year. And I don't think there should be any question about it. Because that, if you're in the league, you can't have that. You're in the era of player safety. You're trying to protect not only the quarterbacks, but all the, other, all the other players in the league, you can't have people doing those type of things on national television. You can't do it. Can't do it. And this is the same dude that's had, whether we're talking about the, the last time that I saw the, the, uh, the Cleveland Browns in primetime against the Jets, we had multiple personal foul penalties. And then again on national television, at the, at the end of the game, where you the game is in hand. You, you got the critical victory. We should be talking about the Cleveland Browns right now pulling off a big win 
and we're talking about Miles Garrett and how long the suspension is going to be. It was stupid and it was selfish. And now you're moving forward with, as you know, you're the Cleveland Browns. Your best player is going to be gone. Okay? Your best player is Miles Garrett. We can talk about Baker Mayfield. We can talk, to, talk about Odell Beckham Jr. Your best player is Miles Garrett. And now for a critical stretch in the season, he's gone. And I don't blame uh, Pouncey, DeCastro, one bit. Because I can tell you, I can tell you something right now. If I was in their shoes, I would have blacked out. And I would have smashed, I would have smashed his ass too. Straight up. You don't do, you don't, and it really should have been, all the linemen should have been on, on top of him. You don't ever let anything like that happen to your quarterback. So, like I said, man, it's, um, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen on a football field. And like I said, you got, you get paid to physically assault another human being, but that felt criminal. It really did. It felt like, like a, like an actual assault. So I said what I said and it's a shame, man. I feel I feel bad for I feel bad for the Cleveland Browns organization and the fans of the Cleveland Browns because you should be celebrating the win right now. You should be celebrating the win. But this is come to tonight, tomorrow, moving forward, this is all we're going to be talking about. And this is going to follow Miles Garrett for the rest of his career. And it's a damn shame because he's a damn good football player.